Hi everybody, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering and today I'll do a quick demonstration of setting up a conjugate heat transfer problem in ANSYS Fluent. I'm, I'm going to be using the latest release uh, 2020 R1, but you're welcome to use any other releases. It's all pretty much the same. So I have a, a model here. We have a heater block with another block on top. There will be energy transfer through conduction, convection, and radiation. So we'll cover most of the basics here. Uh, starting with your CAD model, what we're going to do is uh, prepare this for simulation by creating a cylinder enclosure, cylindrical enclosure. Okay. This cylinder is not the right size, so we can uh, pull this up to holding down control and the mouse wheel. Um, I guess I should move it instead. Move it up here. Uh, let's uh, move this up a little bit. So you want a good size domain to uh, maybe 60 millimeter, 75 millimeters. You want a nice big volume for the simulation to run. So we could have cut this maybe in halves or quarters or even just a two, uh, maybe a quarter or one eighth. Uh, but we're going to assume we want to run the whole simulation. So now this is the model. You can see I have a few parts in here. I have a solid block, heater block, and the enclosure that's with all the solids cut out for it. So that's a nice feature in ANSYS uh, space claim here. When we prepare a geometry using the enclosure, it automatically cuts out everything that in it, it encloses. Uh, before we go for the simulation, we want to go to the workbench tab and perform a shared topology. This gives us uh, node-to-node -node matching. For this model, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it's good practice to have node-to-node -node matching in conjugate heat transfer problems because if we have a surface on a solid that touches both the surface and the air, it could get into issues. You can get into issues. So it's always a good idea to go through this shared topology process and make sure everything looks fine. Next, we're going to go ahead and mesh this model. Okay, it popped on my, on my other screen, but Here's a model. You can get a quick, quick regenerate a basic mesh and take a look. Okay, the mesh doesn't look too bad. Um, it's useful to make the. Uh, let's actually go into a smaller unit system here. Right now it's 14 millimeters. I'm gonna maybe cut that in half to seven millimeters and seven millimeters, just so we have good refinement in this area. Right now we have about 17,000 nodes and 90,000 elements, which is which is fine. Uh, you can t we can take a look at what's happening on the inside of the model by using the section plane feature. This is a section plane button here. Draw a line to look inside, and you can see I have a pretty coarse solid block here, um, and. Uh, you know, it's a very pretty coarse block over here as well. So we, we may want to change that later on. Um, okay, so I'm going to hide all the other bodies. Uh, with conjugate heat transfer, we know that temperature will change pretty rapidly near the wall. So it's always a good idea to put in some inflation layers on this model in this region. So I'm going to sw switch to box select. Select all of the surfaces in that region. Okay, so I have both of them. And we'll get 10 layers on that surface. Okay, so now we have nicely refined uh, mesh near the surface, and that's going to calculate the heat transfer a bit better for us. Uh, with Fluent, we next want to, let's show all body, um, specify our surfaces of interest. So this is obviously of interest. Right click, create name selection, heater. Uh, name this area, um, heater base. So I'm gonna try to name all of the um, boundary conditions for this model, uh, ground. 
call this one the cylinder, very representative of the shape, and this one, top. Okay. So the mesh is done. We'll update to transfer the mesh over to Fluent, and then let's get ready to set up the simulation in Fluent. So here we're going to use four cores to set up the simulation to run the analysis. If you want to use more four than four cores, you need to get ANSYS HPC licenses, uh, and then you can run on a vast number of cores. Okay, we have the model, and we're going to go down this tree on the left-hand side here. So turn on gravity. This will have natural convic convection driving the flow, minus 9.8, around there, meters per second. Turn on models. We definitely want the energy equation on so we can get the temperature. And we want to have radiation turned on. So the radiation will be a surface-to-surface -surface radiation. And we can try to set up a, a view factor calculation. I probably should do this later. Um, OK, I'll, I'll write it again. And then we want to specify the materials. So air right now has a constant density. This will cause it not to experience any natural convection effects. So we're going to turn that into incompressible ideal gas, which allows it to um, use the Boussinex approximation for thermal simulation for natural convection. Cell zones, uh, ANSYS automatically recognizes the enclosure. So it says, well, your enclosure must be a fluid. So this is air defined already for us. And the heater block and solid are both solids, and there's only one material in the solid, aluminum. And we'll leave it at, at that for now. For boundary conditions, we have a bunch of internal uh, connections that ANSYS has figured out for us, so we can leave that. And then there are connections here between the enclosure and the heater block, enclosure and the solid. Uh, so we need to set these other ones here. So the heater here, we will give a heat flux. So the heat flux they want is in watts per meter squared. If we go to the heater and we click on it, we, we know how big it is in meters. So I'll open up a trusty calculator here and say, what's 5 divided by 0 0.00057? Okay, so about 8,000 watts per meter squared. So these are just some basic information we're putting in here. here heater base is a wall. Right? No heat flux, made of aluminum. And we can do a ver variety of other things if we need to on this. Uh, top and so for the top, right now it's defined as a wall. We don't want this to be a wall. So I'm going to right click, change the type. To most of it, so the flow should be coming out of the top. So I'm going to do an out, outlet vent, uh, zero gauge pressure, and uh, leave everything as default. Out backflow temperature, room temperature, radiation, external black body temperature is a boundary temperature. We have emissivity, and this will participate in the view factor calculations. The other walls here, the cylinder. It's right now a wall as well, and I don't want this to be a wall. I want this to be a fluid boundary. So I'm going to make this a, so the other one we said outlet vent. So let's make this one a pressure inlet. And we expect flow to kind of come in from the bottom, get heated up by this heater, and rise up. So this will be, everything is the default here. Again, zero total gauge pressure. And then um, ground is a wall and the heater base is a wall. So everything else looks fine here. I think I should take a look at my heater, though. On the radiation side, OK, everything is participating in radiation. Yeah, OK. OK, so let's go back to radiation surface to surface, surface. And let's go ahead and write this. 
the calculus of u factor of my uh, flow simulation, oh, of my radiation uh, view factors. So we're going to use default initialization, and we're going to run this for 200 iterations. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, the simulation has been completed. So that was a quick little analysis. Uh, let's take a look at the results. Let's look at the results. Contour on our solid blocks. And we can look at uh, rate mm, wall fluxes. Radiation heat flux. Okay, so that shows it better. This is a radiation heat flux of uh, the block and the uh, and the plate. So the heater is heating up and it's pumping in radiation in over here. That's why we have a nice high negative value. Um, so that's a quick example of a simulation down fluent. You can do all the post-processing influence as well. We've really made a lot of improvements in the capabilities. So let's uh, create a plane here. That looks good enough to me. And um, let's display temperature on that plane. So we get the same type of, of plot. We can look at the velocity on the plane as well. Get something like this. So a quick example of how do you do a conjugate heat transfer analysis in ANSYS Fluent with uh, just a heater and an object above. This simulation included radiation, convection, and conduction. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you like this type of video. And if you have any questions on simulation or if you'd like to contact us, please contact us at singularityenergy.com. Have a great day.